If you were looking to get into PC gaming, then this is going to be one of the cheapest and also easiest ways that you can get really good FPS for your dollar. And the most important piece for this build to happen is this right here called the Dell Precision T3600. I picked this up in a recent used PC parts hunt that I did on the channel here for a hundred Aussie dollars. And for this price, I got an extremely good deal where the CPU ended up being a Sandy Bridge Xeon E5-1650, which is a six core, 12 threaded processor clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, all cores. Though this model here, the Dell Precision, it was released in 2012 and came in with a price starting from $1,100. They also had the Precision T5600 and T7600s, which supported two CPUs via the E2000 series Xeons. I believe the most cores you could get on this socket was 16 cores, 32 threads, by utilizing the E2687W, which on its own is an eight core, 16 threaded processor. However, impressively enough, the flagship T7600, even back in its day, could support up to 512 gigabytes of DDR3 ECC registered memory. However, what we've got right here is 16 gigabytes of memory installed, and this is via two sticks. Even though this is a quad channel system, dual channel should be fine, especially with the graphics card we are coupling it with, which is an RX 480. These graphics cards can be had on the market for very cheap. I managed to pick one up for 80 Australian dollars, though if you look on the internet, especially at places like AliExpress, you can pick up an RX 470, 480, 570, or 580 from anywhere from 60 to 120 USD shipped used. Of course, the used part of today's video is a risk that you do take, but you can minimize this greatly if you do ask the sellers or you do check the parts to see if they're working before you purchase them. In the case of buying graphics cards off the internet, they're usually tested and working before you buy them, so you shouldn't have much bad luck. Even if you do, you've usually got seller protections. However, back to this model here, it came with a Quadro FX580 installed. Now this is going to be a terrible graphics card for gaming in 2020. However, once we remove it, we've then got a spare GPU, though this thing I doubt would be worth any more than a pack of peanuts on today's current market. However, the great thing even about this entry level T3600 is that it's got two additional PCI connectors, which we can utilize for our RX 480. And speaking of the power supplies, even the lowest model like this one here has a 425 watt gold rated power supply. Even though it's a proprietary power supply to Dell, it can be upgraded if you have enough funds or you wanna go with a dual socket system, for example. The funny thing about these power supplies is they go up to 1300 watts, and even on today's market, they can still cost a very hefty sum. Though since this was made for enterprise workstations, it does already have two fans cooling in the front and quite a big CPU cooler. So temperatures shouldn't be a problem. The build quality and also the feature set is also quite impressive. Sporting six USB ports at the rear, also onboard audio which spans to the front, and also having an additional four USB ports as well as a mini DVD drive Though in order to make this system fast by modern day standards, we're also going to be adding in a 120 gigabyte SSD and a one terabyte hard drive for backup. Since this system here did include no drives and most likely when you find a system like this on the used market, it's most likely going to either have very minimal drives installed or it's gonna have no drives at all. That's simply because the businesses that resell these do usually have contracts with the places that they source them from to secure or raise the data. And so even if you manage to find a whole system like this, chances are it's going to have no OS installed from the get-go. Though what we're going to do from here on in, since most of the components here on the desk are used, except the SSD, is we're going to clean this system up quickly and then also change the thermal paste on the CPU cooler and the graphics card and then finish off our system. Now that all our components are clean and looking really schmick, it's time to put this thing back together, which will only take a couple of minutes since all we're going to do is uh, put the graphics card in that blue slot there and then install the drives down there in the included drive bays, which one of them perfectly fit for the SSD and one of them was made for a 3.5 inch drive bay. Loading all the games, it's all finished and ready to go. 
But there's one problem, and that is we've got this annoying Windows is not activated message in the bottom right hand corner. And all you guys have to do if you want to solve something like this is use the link in the description below where today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 13 USD for a legit single end Windows 10 Pro license. All you have to do, click that link, drop the coupon code TYCSK, and then click apply and you'll get yourself 12% off. They've also got heaps of different payment options. I use PayPal personally, and I've never had a problem using this website. Links in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So the first title we get up here is Warhammer Chaos Bane, and this is a role-playing game. You can change your skills, and you can see here I'm a mage, and I'm going through it all, but the FPS is really smooth in this title. We're getting over 110 to around about 150 average FPS, depending on the scene during this title with the RX 480. So see here, the RX 480 is being stressed at 100% in this title pretty much all the time. And I'm actually recording now too. And the 1% and 0.1% lows are very smooth as well. So this is a total win for this setup in the first title, but it's also a win in the fact that the uh, temperatures are still under control. Even though you may think, oh, they're getting a little bit hot at 76 degrees. That's not too much of a problem considering we are stuffing this inside a case that was never really intended for this type of GPU, but also it is summer where I'm at. So as long as it's going under 80 degrees, it's fine. Though of course you could probably lower the temperatures by just taking off the side panel and uh, leaving that off for a few minutes. That was a little bit harder than I thought. And uh, GPU dropped down four degrees already in the matter of 20 seconds just by taking that side panel off. So we're now playing GTA 5 and this is pretty much a similar story to Warhammer Chaos Bane. The GPU is pretty much getting maxed at 100% at all times. And uh, also another thing about this game is too, I've decided to play it on high settings at 1080p. And the reason for doing this is you guys have requested in a recent few videos that I play on high settings rather than testing on low settings or epic settings. And I agree because this is a setting that I personally play at with all my titles. And the reason being is I'm either doing one of two things. I'm either pushing my hardware to the max, which is either going to be saving me a bit of power or I'm getting the best visual experience for my current gear. That's how I feel about high settings. Anyway, GTA 5 runs absolutely fine. 1080p high settings blend here, getting over 80 average FPS and 1% and 0.1% lows that are pretty smooth too. So we've now got Apex Legends. This is at sort of high and medium settings here at 1080p and uh, FPS is already looking good. We've just landed. I'll hit the benchmark so we can start seeing the 1% 0.1% lows. But uh, let's roll around and uh, see what FP, I'll see if we can find a gun first. I just heard some gunshots. I haven't played this game in a long time. But one thing I know is FPS is smooth. There's a guy there. Okay, I got wrecked. Let's go, Derek. And Derek got direct as well, the looks of it. All right, anyway, FPS is smooth on Apex. Let's move over now. So we're now playing Fortnite at 1080p high settings, and it's actually a really smooth experience. Uh, the 0.1% lows do occasionally dip here and there, but I believe that's probably because we got it at a high settings. Though the game looks really good, it plays really nicely. We can see here we're averaging around 100 uh, frames per second. Though one thing that does worry me is that there's this artifacting going on. This is in DX12, but also when I opened it up in uh, DX11, it was doing it too. So there must be something wrong at the moment with the game install in particular to this GPU because sometimes it just won't do it at all. And then other times it would just do it all over the place. And I've tried down clocking the GPU and also uh, down clocking the memory, because sometimes if your uh, graphics card is too aggressively clocked, even out of the box, 
it can cause this exact problem where it's artifacting, but I'm guessing that's not the case because the other three games that we played were running perfectly fine, really smooth. Uh, it's just this one seems to be having a problem. So if anyone knows this problem or they've seen it before, then uh, do let us know how you fixed it or should I just wait for an update from Fortnite itself? Because I'll try this graphics card on another computer to see if it does it on another computer. And now we're at the finish line with the Precision T3600. I did check the GPU out on my test rig and that was absolutely fine. So it must have just been the fact that I installed a driver that was two days old versus the latest driver which came out two days later. So I installed that one on the other rig, tested out absolutely fine. So the GPU was fine and those Fortnite numbers will be pretty much the same as what you saw. And to that degree, every single title we put on this thing at 1080p high settings was smooth, both with the 1% and the 0.1% lows. Except for Fortnite, they did go down a little bit, but that's to be expected on DX12, which is what I ran it on when I was playing, but it still didn't take away the fact that I could get some easy frags and still make some good plays with this PC right here. And when we look at it, the Precision 3600, something like this. There's also things like the uh, HP Elite Desk, where you can just buy these PCs and add in a graphics card, add in your drives, and you've got one of the cheapest entries into PC gaming, as well as it being hassle-free. So for those people who are like, oh, you gotta go out and build your own computer, PC gaming's really expensive, this is the counter-argument to that, where it's not that expensive at all to get into PC gaming. In fact, it's cheaper to get into PC gaming than console gaming if you're willing to buy some used parts. The funny thing is, this is actually a lot easier to do than it is to go out and build your uh, new computer. And a reason for doing that is that we only had to add in a few small components and the extra step that you saw with the cleaning that I did here today really wasn't necessary. The GPU was already clean, the insides of this rig were already pretty clean as well, and most likely if you pick up these enterprise solutions, there's also like uh, the HP Elite Desk, and things like that that'll work perfectly fine, you can get these and also get good power consumption. What I was reading from the wall was about 250 watts while we were playing with this combination right here. So super power efficient, considering it's an 80 plus gold rated power supply, which was a bonus that is gonna be more efficient too. So overall, really impressive rig. The one thing in the case of the precisions that you have to worry about is that side panel. If you wanna put it back on and you've got a bigger graphics card, like the RX 480 that we used here today, unfortunately you will need to do something about that handle inside the panel. Of course, if you wanna take care of your rig and you don't mind a little bit extra noise, you can just leave the side panel off as we saw in those games. As soon as we took it off, the temperatures dropped down instantly by four degrees. I'm sure if I left that off for 10 minutes, we would have got low 70s, possibly into the 60 degree mark, which is really good in the case of this whole rig. So longevity, I'd keep the side panel off anyway. Your mileage may vary, but entry point into PC gaming. It's done right here. This is the easiest way in 2020 to get into PC gaming hassle-free. Uh, we did have to add that SCD keys as well, but what I've tallied up here is about 240 Aussie dollars or 160 USD to get into PC gaming with really good performance at 1080p and smooth performance too, as we saw with those 1% and 0.1% lows the games were running really fine, except when we tested Fortnite in DX12, the 0.1% lows did go a little bit low, but that did not stop me from getting frags. And another thing too is, with this price point, it's great for a lot of people because if you don't want to invest too much in PC gaming, say for instance, you're like, well, I'm uncertain if I want to get into PC gaming and I don't want to spend too much money on it, then this solution will be perfect as well because if you decide that PC gaming's not for you, you can easily turn around and sell something like this for what you paid for it in a click of a finger. Though another thing too, with this FPS that you've got here on the table, you can choose to lower it as well, get more FPS. So if you wanna get a cheap 1080p 120 hertz monitor, then you can do that as well and you'll get even more of a smooth experience. Now, funny thing is about PC gaming, me personally, I've always said in the past, if you give me a 1080p monitor, I'll be happy gaming on something this cheap. Even though I've got something like a 2080 Ti in my main desktop, which I use for editing videos, I still have a passion for 1080p gaming. I think once you step it up to 27 inch, or you go to 4K 32 inch, or you go to ultra wides that are 34 inch uh, wide, those uh, start to give you, sure, a better visual experience. 
The one thing about PC gaming is that a few years ago, I stepped it up from a 120 hertz 1080p monitor to then a 1440p monitor and then to a 4K, and then I tried an ultra wide as well. And I noticed that although the visual experience sure was better, I didn't particularly enjoy PC gaming that much more. Like I actually kind of enjoyed having that 24 inch monitor. I thought it was a perfect size for PC games, especially in the case of MOBAs like Dota 2, I could see everything on the screen easy. And I found, especially when you went up to a 32 inch monitor, things started to get too big and you'd miss things in battles and you'd actually start performing worse on a bigger monitor than you were on a smaller monitor. So do let us know in the comments section below what your feelings are about PC gaming and different budgets and how you feel about different monitor sizes. Cause I love reading your thoughts and opinions on that. But speaking of thoughts and opinions, we do have the question of the day, which comes from Hudson Jackson II. And they asked, just curious, is Bluetooth audio better than the cheap onboard audio? And this is coming off the back of the Creative G3 review we did, which was a portable USB add-in, which I recommended for people who uh, had really bad onboard audio or if they got laptop audio. And uh, basically Bluetooth audio can either be better or it could even be worse than bad onboard audio. As we saw those statistics, what you're measuring when you measure audio objectively is you're measuring the endpoints. What is going to go to your ears after that point? And so as we saw with the laptop audio, that was horrible. I wouldn't recommend people listening to music on that particular device we tested. And so Bluetooth audio, you have to test each individual piece. I'm assuming that real cheap Bluetooth audio could be just as bad as cheap onboard audio. But ultimately it all depends on that last piece of gear and what's hitting your ears. And the funny thing is some of these pieces of uh, gear can be so bad for your ears. And it's funny because if you put on a pair of glasses and it's way too blurry, your natural reaction is to take those glasses off because you know that's going to damage your eyes. Uh, the difference between sound is sometimes we're in situations where we've got to keep playing the game or we're with friends at a concert and we know that audio is bad that's coming into our ears, but we choose not to uh, get away from it and we keep being exposed to it. But one thing I've learned to do is that when I walk into these situations, I quickly walk out. And so for instance, when we go to a live concert, uh, if I walk into a live concert and they're using terrible speakers and you can hear it straight away, you just know cheap audio after you've listened to it a heap of times and they're using real cheap gear and it's really loud, I'll just walk away from that source and be like literally 10 meters away at least from that live concert. As opposed to walking into a good live concert where they're using really good speakers, you'll notice it straight away and that won't actually damage your ears. A lot of the times it's actually not the loudness level that damages your ears, but rather the distortion and the inequalization of those frequencies in that they have the tendency to spike and those spikes can really hurt your ears really quickly. Anyway guys, do be careful with audio. That's one thing I'll let you know. But generally, the more you spend on audio gear, just like anything else in this world, the better it's going to be generally. Anyway guys, I've ranted on enough about audio. Do let us know what you think of this budget Dell setup that we've got here on the desk. Six cores, 12 threads, RX 480, 16 gig of RAM, SSD hard drive, all for around 160 USD in the comment section below. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, you wanna see at the moment it drops, sub button, ring the bell to get the vids as soon as they hit your sub box. And also if you wanna get that cheap CD key using the coupon code TYCSK, then I'll put the link in the description below. With that aside, I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.